speaker had a start to chat. I was afraid I'd be late. That's the thing that I had to do before I could go to church. Sorry, I missed the worship part, but I'm glad I... Oh, pardon me, I'm sorry. Pardon my rudeness. Let me introduce myself. My name is Dulas Bardulu. Dulas Bardulu. My name in your language means a slave, the son of a slave. It's a name that has a combination of Greek words and Aramaic words. The Greek word doulos or doulou means slave, while the Aramaic word bar means the son of. And so doulos, a slave, bar, the son of, doulou, a slave, as you can see, means a slave, the son of a slave. As my name suggests, I was born into slavery. I've been a slave all my life, just as my father before me, my mother, God love her, was also a slave all her life. I never knew her. She died in childbirth when she had me. My father also died when I was young. I was only two when he had a heat stroke working out in my master's summer fields. And he died. I have no memories of either my mother or my father. I was taken in by a man and his wife, a very compassionate and kind couple, also slaves, also people who had been slaves all their lives. They, they took me in and, and basically made me their son. They had no other children. In fact, uh, the woman was not able to bear any children, and so they had no children, and they took me in as their own. I am the property, ah, we are the property, I hate to even thought of that phrase. We're the property of a man by the name of Philemon. Philemon is, well, he is a good slave master, as good as a slave master can be. He certainly is good to his friends, very good to them, and he is also good to us slaves insofar as we are provided food to eat and work clothes to wear while we're in the fields and uh, a place to sleep. So in that regard, he's good. he's good. He does expect that we will be loyal to him. And so he's good to us as long as we do our work uh, productively and effectively and we're faithful to him and as long as we don't try to sneak away. And you see, Philemon demands absolute loyalty and the very hint of disobedience or disloyalty or insubordination will result in the lashings. <sighs> Let me tell you, those lashings will bring a man to his knees in a hurry. I should know having been on the receiving end of more of them than I want to admit. Philemon is uh, a Christian man. He is a member of the church at Colossae. And he takes us sometimes with him to church at Colossae. But other than that, these slaves are back on the farm. My step-parents, my adopted parents, are so much to me like parents. After all, they're the only ones I ever knew that I, I, I call them Mama and Papa. That's the only names by which I've ever called them. Uh, my, my Papa has been a slave all his life. My Mama uh, has also been a slave all of her life. It's not quite time for the speaker yet. Can I, can I tell you my story? Is, would that be okay with y'all? Can I? Can I tell you? I, I promise you that I'll stop if the speaker comes out. I promise you that. But when I was 10, I'm a man now, but when I was 10 years old, a slave trader who was also an auctioneer approached my master, Philemon, desiring to purchase my papa. Now, he didn't want 
my mama, and he didn't want me because I was too young to be of any value to him. He didn't want my mama because she was crippled. But he just wanted my papa. Philemon agreed to sell my papa, but only if the slave trader, the auctioneer, would purchase both my, ma my mama and me as well. I'll have to hand it to Philemon, my master. It is not his policy to break up families like other slave masters. He just doesn't do it. And as you can see, sometimes even a slave master can have some kind of a conscience. But no matter how much he insisted on the slave trader taking all three of us, the slave trader refused to take my mother. And because normally when families are broken up, the children are left with their mothers, uh, he had no interest in me. And it, it, it wasn't until it wasn't until the slave trader offered my master more money for my papa alone than he would normally have offered for all three of us, even with my mama healthy, that Philemon reluctantly agreed. The slave trader had no use for a female slave who was both crippled and unable to bear any children who could also be slaves. So he had no use for my mama. My mama was not always crippled. You may wonder, how did she get crippled? It happened three years before the slave trade came. My mama and papa were out in the wheat fields. They were cutting wheat, bundling and tying the bundles together, and then loading the wheat bundles up on an ox cart. And from there, the ox cart would carry the bundles of wheat uh, to the wheat barns, and, and the slaves would be back in there and unload the wheat bundles and stack them just so-so. And while my mom and papa were out in the field and loading with the ox cart, the ox cart became top heavy. They didn't realize it. My mama was standing right beside the ox cart. Her back was to the ox cart because she was about to go back out into the field. But the overfull ox cart toppled over without her knowing it, and it fell over on top of my mama. It took eight grown men to lift that ox cart off my mama. She was badly injured. Her leg was broken in at least one place, possibly many other places. And if you know anything about slavery in any century, but certainly in the first century, you know that slaves rarely got proper medical attention. And so my mother did not get any medical attention. Her, her leg eventually did heal, but it healed improperly. And so for the rest of her life, her, her leg was literally crooked. She could hardly walk. And when she did walk, she had a, a, a terrible and permanent limb. And so, Philemon sold my papa because I guess the slave trader offered Philemon a price that even a Christian such as he could not down. My mama cried. She screamed. I'll never forget her wail. She begged Philemon not to allow our family to be split apart. But her, her tears were to no avail. I was distraught over the fact that both my papa and mama, two people who had taken me in and they didn't even have to and let me be their son. They were upset and it was melting my heart and scarring me. And I cried, but it didn't do any good either. My papa, a quiet man, wept. Didn't make a sound, he just wept. It was the first and only time I ever saw my papa weep. It would be the last time I ever saw it. I remember the last words he told me. He knelt down so he could see me eyeball to eyeball, and he said, Do it. Take care of your mama. And I promised him I would, as much as a 10 year old slave boy could. Philemon keeps an average of 
15 slaves at any given day. But, as you can already tell, he's definitely open to trading for better slaves if an opportunity opens itself. But he's a Christian, and every Sunday he worships at the church in Colossae. I always love it because they meet in different households from one Sunday to the next, one Lord's Day to the next. And quite often, not always, but quite often, Philemon will herd all of us slaves, 14, 15, 16 slaves, and he'll carry us with him to the church at Colossae. And for that reason, for the most part, the slaves that Philemon owns only work six days rather than a full seven days, at least uh, Officially, that's what we do. Now, I will tell you that there are some Sundays that, that you still have to do some slave labor, even if, even if it's not as much as the other six days. I mean, after all, Sunday or Sunday, or Sunday not, there's always uh, people to feed, food to cook, uh, clothes to be laundered, oxen to be fed, chores to be done. And so we still have to do some work on those Sundays, but not as much as we normally do. And so... Because we get at least a little bit of rest, but I have come to look forward to going to church at Colossae. Even if we are forced to do so, I still quite like it. Uh, which brings me to uh, the reason that I'm excited to be here today. I have heard that we're having a guest speaker, and the guest speaker is the Apostle Paul. And I am very eager to hear what he has to say because I believe, I just can't help but to believe that the Apostle Paul is going to tell the church at Colossae, among other things, to set the slaves free. Is that not a good expectation? Do you not think that's what he ought to tell the slave owners here? To set the slaves free? I think so. I mean... Let's put it this way. Can you picture Jesus owning and beating slaves? Can you? Certainly not. Do you think that he would even condone slavery? There's no way. Not the Jesus I know. Not the Jesus you know. And so the Apostle Paul, being the foremost spokesperson for Christianity in the Roman Empire today, how can he not... If he comes to speak to a church in which there are slave masters, how could he not beckon them to free their slaves? <laughs> so, I'm expecting him to proclaim their freedom. I talked with my mama about this, about my expectations for what Paul uh, might say. And, and uh, I said, Mama, I expect that Paul will come and he will say something to the slave owners, free the slaves. I'm expecting that. I'm, I'm, I'm fully anticipating that's what he will say. And my mama said, well, my son, he, he may do that. He may proclaim freedom to the captives, to the slaves. But I would not get my hopes up if I were you. Don't get your hopes up, son. I, I couldn't believe her pessimism. I said, my mama. Do you believe Jesus would own slaves? Condone the owning of slaves? She said, certainly not. I said, well, does not Paul get his message from Jesus? She thought a moment. She said, well, I suppose that he does. I said, well, then how could he not? I said, in fact, I, I have heard that in another letter to, uh, in a letter to the churches of Galatia, he told them, in Christ there is neither male nor female, uh, Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free. He said that, Mama. If he said that to them, I would expect him to say at least that, maybe more, to those of us at Colossae and throughout the churches of, in and around Ephesus. Well, my son, she said, it's possible, but again, don't get your hopes up. And then this troubled look poured over my mama's face. I said, what's the matter, Mama? And she said, What would I do? What would I do? I said, what do you mean? What would you do? What, what, what do you mean? She said, what would I do if, if I were to be set free? My son, look at me, she said. 
I'm an old woman. I'm a crippled woman. I'm, I've, I've never been able to bear children. What would I do? How would I live? I could not get a child because I'm crippled and no man would take me as his wife because I'm number one all and because I can no longer bear children. I've never been able to bear children. What would I do? Slavery is all I've ever known. I've never known any other life than being a slave. What would I do? I said, Mama, Mama, you have to believe that the worst day in freedom would be better than the best day in slavery. You have to believe that. And besides, Mama, I'm be here to take care of you. Papa told me to take care of you, and I promised him I would, and I'll be here. You don't know, she said. I said, what do you mean I don't? I don't know. She says, you don't know if you'll be here. You're a man now. Philemon, our master, could sell you away just like he sold your papa, and I would be left alone. You don't know. Do you? And truly, I don't know. I couldn't guarantee it, but I did say to her, all the more reason to hope that Paul will free the slaves. All the more reason, Mama. Don't get your hopes up, Mama said. Well, it's almost about time for our speaker to speak. And I can't wait because I know what he's going to say. And I'm going to sit down here and I'm going to, I'm going to listen to what he, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not Paul. That's, that's not Paul. What? Oh, Paul has written a letter to our church. He sent a letter for someone else to read to us. Oh, I'm disappointed. I really am. I was hoping to see Paul for myself, but well, at least he has sent word to us. And I'm hoping that in that letter he will tell the slaves, the slave owners, that they need to free the slaves. Uh, who is it that he sent to read the letter? It's, oh, it's Tychicus. Is it Tychicus? It is Tychicus. Tychicus is going to read the letter. And who is that with him? Who is that? No. Onesimus. Onesimus, who is the runaway slave who's been gone for three months, Onesimus. Onesimus is, is with him. Does he not realize how he has risked his life to be here today? Does he not know that? Onesimus escaped three months ago, and he's been gone. Who's he been with? Who? No. He's been with Paul. He's been with the Apostle Paul for most of the last three months, and Paul has sent him back to Philemon? No way. You must be kidding me. There is no way. I knew that Philemon had sent a search party out looking for Onesimus, and I knew that he had alerted the Roman authorities, and they had put parchment posters all over Asia Minor, uh, letting everyone know that Onesimus was a fugitive. Oh, I can't believe it. Now, I know some of you, some of you have been told that slavery in, in my day was not as bad as slavery in your country's history. Well, I don't know about that. But I will tell you that while it may not have been as bad as what was in your history, let me just tell you, my friends, that slavery is slavery. And slavery in any form is immoral and unjust and is against God's will. I know that some of you have probably, probably been told that slaves in my day had it made. We were better off slaves than we were free, you've probably been told. By the way, I've also been told that that's what some of the farmers in the 1800s in your country used to say, too. It wasn't true then. And it wasn't true in my day. Oh, I can't believe Onesimus is here, risking his life. Oh, Tychicus, he's getting ready to read. He's getting ready. Let's listen to see what he's going to say. What does Paul say? Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to God's holy people in Colossae, the faithful brothers and sisters in Christ, Yes, Grace yes. and peace to you from God our Father. Yes, yes, get on. Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything. What? And do it not only when their eye is on you and to curry their favor, but with sincerity of heart and mm -hmm. reverence for the Lord. No. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not Nothing for the human masters. <laughs> Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. 
Anyone who does wrong will be repaid for their wrongs, and there is no favoritism. Masters, provide your slave with what is right and fair, right and because fair. you know that you also have a master in heaven. They won't do that. You've got to be kidding me. Slaves obey your masters in everything. Everything? As if we're working for the Lord and not human masters? What? Tychicus will tell you all the news about me. He is a dear brother, a faithful minister, and fellow servant in the Lord. I am sending him to you for the express purpose that you may know about our circumstances and that he may encourage your hearts. He is coming with Onesimus, our faithful and dear brother, who is one of you. They will tell you everything that is happening here. Our dear friend Luke, the doctor, and Dennis send greetings. Give my greetings to the brothers and sisters in Laodicea and to Nympha and the church in her house. I, Paul, write this greeting in my own hand. Remember my chains. Grace be with you. My! They must be more. Remember your chains. Your chains. What about our chains? What about our chains? Why do you not want to say anything about our chains? I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. Mama, Mama, can you believe this? I told you, my son. You told me what? What did you tell me? I told you, Mama said, not to get your hopes up. Disappointment is easier to bear if your expectations are low, my son. something as important to you and me and us about slavery that he could not say, what other issues are there that he might have something to say about? But he just cannot say it. 